Hello, <coughs> it's Tanya from Tatty Treasures and welcome to another Lazy Sunday. So I've just made a playlist up for um, the book flip throughs and I have called it <laughs> the Lazy Sunday Book Club. <laughs> so I quite like that. So today we're going to look through the Frampton Flora and this is by Richard uh, maybe uh, I've had this one before it's the second time <clears throat> that I've had it and the last time I had it I <clears throat> absolutely just cut it to, to pieces uh, I didn't use any of the actual pages as pages um, I did them into you know tag size and fussy cut and I got loads out of this book so I thought it was well worth getting it again um, and it will fit in nice with the botanical uh, series that I'm going to be doing next year. So let's have a look at the inside. So inside the dust sheet, it's um, the same. So I could possibly use this book to do an altered uh, book when you've finished. So I mean, you won't even have to cover that, I mean you could perhaps just cover that or put a different book plate on so yeah and the back's lovely so I think this one will be definitely worth saving so let's have a quick look what it says 300 Victoria flower paintings recently discovered in an attic at Frampton Court in Gloucestershire you can't imagine can you that <clears throat> there's all these wonderful things um, hidden away and people, I mean I'm guessing this book is, it, I don't know how old it is but, you know, X amount of years old but people are still finding things, I think it's fab. Um, these represent the most earliest and intriguing collections of amateur photo, photo, sorry, flower paintings found to date. They are bold exactly observed and beautifully skillfully executed by Charlotte Anne, I think that's Pernell, per per in, in particular show talent that must now rank her amongst the best of her generation. Between 1828 and 1851, the sisters Elizabeth, Charlotte and Catherine and Mary Ann Clifford and their aunts, aunts <coughs> Charlotte Ann, Catherine Elizabeth and Rosamond explored the corner of the southwest Gloucestershire and succeeded in painting an impressive number of its native plants. Their chief inspiration was simply the area that they lived in. Frampton lies in the valley of Ber is it Berkeley, an area of mixed farming, crisscrossed by dikes and streams. The River Severn is just one mile to the west and five miles to the south with Charlotte Ann's house. Stancombe Park with its landscape grounds set amongst the wild Cotswold beech woods. How wonderful. <clears throat> so, gosh, there's a lot of them. All very talented too. Let me just keep that up because the, the light's shining, shining on. So, um, the book came out in 1985. So, it's beautiful. So that's just an introduction. I guess this is a map of, of the area. And that's that's actually the, the whole family in 1843. Wow. <laughs> a picnic in a woodland glade. But who's painting the painters? <laughs> So these are family portraits. This is Charlotte Clifford. This is Marianne Clifford. And I think she's in her widow clothes. Didn't they used to wear widow clothes for about a year or something after? Or did they wear them forever after? So this talks about the grounds of, of the house. 
wonder if it's a house that you can go and actually uh, visit. I must um, <coughs> search it on, on YouTube. Um, on Google, sorry. So here's all the, the book plates. So I think when I cut this one out last time, I did actually cut it out in, in two. And I did use those kind of pictures in like file folders and stuff like that. And then just did collage underneath with book pages and things. That's very pretty. So it's a very green book. That's why I say I think it'll be perfect for, for doing the botanicals. A splash of colour there. Some of them I didn't cut them out like that. I just cut <clears throat> one of them out and perhaps then the other one I, I did a fussy cut um, out. I know I used that on a file folder. I think I used that at the back of one. It looked really nice. I've still got um, a folder with quite a few of them um, left. But once I start my project, I will need lots and lots of pictures. And it's nice to have a choice. So it, this is going through, <coughs> you know, not just the grounds and that, it's going through surrounding areas. And then it, it does tell you a little bit about the history of the areas. That's beautiful. Love how it's got, you know, the rip and, and the aged. Somebody must have spilt something. That's fab. Oh, that might be just natural aging from the sides. That's really nice. That's beautiful. I think I did fussy cut that, that one out. So I ended up getting this out on Amazon. I think it was between five and seven pounds anyway. Um, I will put the link in the description and obviously the prices do uh, go go up and down. That's very, very nice. Um, <clears throat> I like that one. So it, it had gone really high for quite a while. Um, I've, I've been watching it a while. So books that I'm interested in or want to buy again, um, I do keep them in my Amazon basket and then at least once a week, probably about three times a week, um, I check them and check uh, the prices and things and I try and wait till they, they go a little bit low and then grab them because when you want them, for certain projects <laughs> that's when you find that they've gone sky high because everybody else is wanting them because it's you know that time of year or or whatever so this is all about orchids such pretty plants aren't they that looks so delicate I used to love the orchids that you used to get. <coughs> oh, not that they probably still do them. But those boxed um, ones. I think I've said before my grandma was a florist. Um, and she often had those around. It's coming like a little glass um, bottle. And then in a box. And I think... I don't know if she used them for doing corsages or or what, but she used to do a lot. She she worked at a florist, but um, <clears throat> and it was for a company called Interflora, um, which was a massive um, company. I don't know if it even still exists now or or not, but every single place had uh, an Interflora, and um, but she worked from home as well. She did a lot of private weddings and, and funerals and things so there was flowers around the house <clears throat> all the time um, 
and they the house that she lived in obviously once upon a time the house didn't have a bathroom um and then they had like a little bathroom put on at the side of the house um <clears throat> and my grandma's house wasn't central heated uh they was well, they had coal fires when when i was little she, they did end up having um gas fires but um yeah, there was just a overhead uh, heater in the bathroom, uh, and it was the coldest bathroom. Well, it was the coldest room ever that I've ever been in in my life. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, so, and it was the tiniest bathroom too. They just had a shower and a toilet and a sink in there, um, and. Forget my that's just so pretty, and they remind me of my grandma. She, her front garden was absolutely full of them. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was such a such a tiny little bathroom, um, and she would keep her flowers in there when she was, you know, doing doing an order uh, because it was the coldest house in in the room, um, and it kept them fresher for longer. Um, <laughs> So there'd be about three, four buckets in the um, shower, and then you know the odd bucket on the on the floor, and then in the passageway. Um, so yeah, it, like I say, it was already a tiny bathroom. Um, and she'd say, "Don't put that heater on; it damage my flowers." <laughs> That's beautiful. I don't think she learned floristry till she was about 30. I think she went to night school, if I remember um, rightly. So again, found talent later on, and saying she was a good, a good florist. It's beautiful. So she used to, um, well, they used to take it in turns at church because she was um, a member of, like, the women's um, group. I forget what it was called. Um, oh, women's, is it the Women's Institute? Um, I can remember using that one on something. I didn't realise that was a yucca. Um, and they used to have a rotor um, at church who did, you know, the the church, there was a font when you first walked in uh, the church on the right hand side um, <clears throat> and they often used to do big arrangements in the font, oh they was beautiful. I mean now, I bet churches couldn't afford um to to have those kinds of, of flowers, um, there was absolutely enormous um, arrangements, and then they would have uh, one or two at the at the front of the church, and again there was you know absolutely massive arrangements. So yeah, I think probably every six weeks or something should be. At church and you used to have to get there really early. I don't know if they actually went on the Saturday night or if they went really early on the Sunday. Um, I can't quite remember that um, to get the flowers done. And then when my aunt still lived at home, um, she got quite into floristry as, as well. So, um, yeah, she used to go down and, and help my grandma and then um i used to stay most weekends because my mum um worked in the in a pub for many years so she always worked on a friday and saturday night so yeah i often used to you know go down with them and oh and church was freezing as well actually i can just remember it yeah it was probably as cold as my grandma's bathroom <laughs> 
phones in used to be all around these these women all fussing about over over flowers and getting you know laying a table out ready for tea and and things because um yeah quite often you know people would stay after church and uh, there was a hall next door and they'd sit and you know have a chat and a, and a get together and things so that was the Frampton Court um, I think you'll agree it's an absolutely stunning book and like I say I will um, I will look on Google and see about this house see if it's still there um, and see if it's um, you know open to the public and, and stuff there might be some nice pictures of of the house inside and, and things so thank you very much for joining me I hope you've had a super a super Sunday and I hope you've spent some nice time with either family or loved ones or just had a bit of me time um, I love Sundays so speak to you soon bye for now